I'd like to talk to you about something that's very important in the game development process. Anytime that you're making a character, a creature, weapons, props, environment pieces, doesn't matter, anything that's going to go into the game, scale is going to play a huge part in that process. And you definitely want to make sure that you have scale figured out at the very beginning of your project because if you don't, this can have serious consequences later on in the project. So definitely take the time and make sure that you have scale figured out at the very beginning. We're going to be looking at how we can set up scale. We're going to be using the Unreal Engine to uh, push all of our assets into. So let's take a look at how we can get things set up in both Maya and Unreal Engine. So we know any work that we do in Maya will be pushed over to Unreal Engine 4 and we can be confident that our scale is going to work for the rest of the project. So first off, make sure you have the latest and greatest version of Unreal Engine. And I'm going to double click on the icon here to load up the, uh, the little tool that they have to go ahead and get yourself started on a project. You can see at the time of this video that I'm actually using the uh, version 4.4. Um, so up here is going to be your engine slots, and again, this might change by the time you watch this video. They've been doing a lot of work to this tool for how you open up the Unreal Engine. And down here you might see your different projects that you have. So I'm just going to take this version that's 4.4, and I'm going to go ahead and say Launch, and that's going to kind of change this window a little bit after it loads up. And I think this is going to be off screen. It's actually loading. I have a dual monitor set up. So once this loads, I'll bring it on over so you can take a look at it. Setra has been loaded for the engine. We're going to take a look here now. We've got our different projects and I've made this class project. I'll just show you here. We're going to go to new project and there's a bunch of different templates that you can use. The one that we're using for this thing, if we scroll down, it's a third person uh, game. Uh, kind of like a uh, newer Zelda, Wind Waker kind of camera view, that kind of thing. And there's two different versions for this. There's a C++ version and there's a blueprint version. So we want the uh, blueprint version. And then in here's where you can give it a name and hit create project. So what I did was just called it class project. So I'm going to click this and say open. If you're creating it for the first time, I think it will probably auto uh, load this for you. Okay, here we are inside of the Unreal Engine 4. And you can see this is the uh, little world that we're working with. The first thing I'm going to do is just show you how to jump into the game and take a look at things. So we're going to take this little arrow here, check this and say we're going to play in selected viewport, which is what we're looking at right here. So I'm going to hit play and you can see it's going to drop us down into the game and it's like a first person shooter movement W A S D and you can use the space bar to jump around in there. So you can see this is the camera template that we'll be working with. If you want to see this full screen, you can tap F11 and that'll put you full screen as you walk around. And if you want to go back to the editor, you can hit F11 again to get this view. And if you want to get out of this play mode, just hit escape. And it'll drop you in the game um, right where you sit from exiting out the game like that. Okay, so that's how we can kind of get in there. Now let's take a look at the actual scale of things in here. So what I'm going to show you guys is that we can go up here to geometry and you can actually make some primitive shapes directly within the uh, program here. So you can see there's a box, a cone, cylinder, curved stairs, a sphere, things like that. We're going to actually make a box. So let's just go ahead and click on that and we'll go ahead and click and drag this into the world. And you can see that's going to give us this box here. That's actually a live object right now in this form that it's in. So you can come over here into the details panel and we can just change the scale of this to, you could make this like 100 and let's go make this 100 and I'll hit tab for this and make this 100 like that. So now we've got a box that's a 100 units by 100 units by 100 units like that. We could make a box that's just one unit by one unit by one unit. The only problem with that is it gets kind of hard to see that thing. Um, but we'll leave it at this for now because I want to show you how this translates over into uh, Maya. So we can actually change this from this piece of uh, primitive that it is that's live like this and we can say with this arrow here create static mesh. And when we do that 
it's going to ask us where do we want to save this thing at. So we've got a, fo a folder structure here that came with the setup. This is already made by Epic. And you can place this anywhere you want. You can see over here they've given us a folder called Shapes. So let's just go ahead and save it within there. So you can see under Shapes here, we'll click on that and we can give it a name and this will be a one by one cube and we'll say create static mesh like this. Uh, and you can see as soon as we make this there will be this little asterisk which means we can actually save this. We need to save that. So I'm going to right click on there and just say save real quick and that turns it into an actual real asset, an Unreal Engine asset. Um, if we click on this cube now, you can see we've got these different things under transform in the details to where we can center this in the center of the world. So we've got a location for X and Y and Z. So you can see the little uh, thing down here that'll show you that. So we're going to do 0, 0, 0 for that. And then this is actually underneath the world. You can see they've made the, uh, the center of their grid is actually below this uh, this little level that they've got going on here. So I'll go ahead and click that thing again. And now I want to get that object out of here. I'm going to go ahead and select it here, right click, and then we're going to say export. And then you can throw that anywhere that you want. So I'm just going to put this on the desktop real quick and call it a one by one cube dot FBX. Save that out. And then we're going to hop on over to Maya and we're going to check out the scale inside of Maya. So here we are inside of Maya, and this is just a blank scene. We're going to go ahead and say File, Import, and Import in our 1x1 one one cube. So I'm going to go to File, Import, Option Box, and I'm going to pull this over here. So you can see anytime you see one of these little boxes over here, you hit that, and it gives you the actual options for whatever that tool is. We're going to say File Type, and drag down and find uh, FBX, and go ahead and say Import and we need to navigate to where did we save that thing. I just saved it off to the desktop so I'm going to click on desktop and let that load up and then I'm going to find my one by one cube.fbx. So I'm going to say import like that. And I'm going to tap F to frame in on this thing. It was really difficult to see because it's uh, so small. I'm going to go to window and go to the outliner. I like to use the outliner to take a look at everything that's in my scene. So you can see the only thing I have currently are these different cameras and then this FBX um, model that's been imported in like that. Okay, so anytime you want to grab this, you just click this here and if you want to frame on it, just tap F and we can uh, zoom out just a little bit. The thing I wanted to show you is that this is a one by one cube, uh, one by one Unreal uh, unit inside of Unreal but it also equals out to centimeters here. So if we go to Windows, Setting Preferences, and go to the Preference tab, and we take a look at our different uh, settings here, we can see that we are working in centimeters. So uh, Unreal is actually using centimeters for their stuff too, so we should be good for that. The up axis in Maya is Y, so you can see here on this little manipulator, Z goes this direction, X goes this direction, and Y goes up. Um, that's a bit different in Unreal, so just take note of that, that um, the Z dimension is going up in Unreal, and then Y is coming this way. So it's a little bit flipped, but it shouldn't cause us uh, too many problems. It's just something you might want to take note of. So I'm going to show you how to get the grid set up. And if we take a look at the grid, we're going to go to... Um, display grid and go to the option box like this and we're going to take a look at if you want to set in the perspective window how far out this thing gets pushed you do it with this here with this length and width so let me just put um, I'll put like 40 here in grid lines I'll do that every one uh, unit and then subdivisions one I'll hit apply and you can see my grid has shrunk down now and what we can actually see is that each one of these grid units equals out a uh, centimeter for us. So we've got a grid that's matching things within an Unreal. Now, um, if you want to do centimeters to meteor conversion, you can find, uh, just do a Google search from centimeter to feet because you kind of want to get roughly the understanding of what uh, does a foot equal out to. So if we put one foot in here, 
that's going to be roughly a little more than 30 centimeters. So I'm just going to use that and just say roughly 30 centimeters is going to be about a foot. So I'll keep this set to, uh, I'll do 90 for this to push out my grid even further. Grid lines every 30 units like this, hit apply. So each one of these grid units now equals roughly about a foot right here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six feet going across this way and this way. Now, what we could do is change the, uh, the colors of these. I like to change this to where the axis is this color. Grid lines are maybe black like this. And subdivisions, we could do, um, we could do 30 subdivisions within there and make those gray. If I hit apply and we've got all these put on here, now you can see our grid options look something uh, like this, where you can tell this is a foot, this is our center line or axis going down here, and then these are the little tiny grid increments that are running along there. Now if you don't want to see those little tiny grid increments there, you can turn off the subdivision lines and just like that. You can hit that, or you could just do subdivisions, put that at one. Or if you just want it, uh, this to be divided down the center, you could put that at two and you can see how you're getting um, better fidel fidelity through that thing. Maybe you could do three or something like that. So then that would equal out 10, 10, 10 uh, grid units there. So it's up to you how you want to uh, make your grid. After you're done, you can say save settings. So the grid's uh, set up. If we hit our space bar, we can look at these different views. So we've got a top view, uh, a front and a side view and if we scroll out on there you can see this is what we got going on for uh, the grid so I'll zoom out even further like this and here like that okay so uh, this is getting pretty good um, but that's just one cube right so I think what would be a little bit better is if we had a representation of a character so we can hop back on over to Unreal so I'm just going to click over here. And within their folder structure, um, they do have under character, they've got their hero character that you can click and drag in here. And you can see him. You can put him at the origin of the world too. You can put him at 0, 0, 0, which is going to push him under the, um, under the grid at that point. So I'm not going to do that. And then we could rotate him forward like that. So this is what we want to get inside of Maya. So again, we can just take this model, we can right click on it, and we can say export. So we're ex exporting that out, we'll put it on the desktop, it's already got a name, Hero TPP. We'll save that out, and then we'll hop back on over to Maya. And then now we're going to import that in the same way we did our cube. So we'll go File, Import, Option Box, and then go to FBX, say Import, go to the desktop, and here's our hero guy. Just click on that and say import. And you should load into the center of the thing here. So now you can see we've got a much better representation of what's going on scale wise. Uh, um, so if we go to the front view, I'm just going to tap the space bar over this. Again, we can tap the space bar to go in and out of this quad view that we've got going on here. And you can go into any view, just hover your cursor over that view and tap the space bar. I'm going to go to the front and zoom out a little bit. I'm going to take the grid and I'm going to turn off those subdivision lines just because they are kind of bothering me right now for what I want to look at. So we've got uh, one foot here, two, three, four, five, six. So their character is a little bit higher than um, six feet. If we wanted a, an exact six foot uh, measurement, we could go back to that conversion tool and we could type in six feet like this. And you can see here's the exact number that we would want to say this is six foot right here like that. So I can just copy that number. I'll go back in here. I'll go back into the perspective view. And then we're going to look at creating a primitive inside of Maya to give us a box that represents that scale. So we'll just go to create polygon primitives cube and then option box. So you can see how that flows out from there. And we want this interactive creation to be turned off. I'm not a fan of that. So we're gonna go to a cube, option box, like that. And then width, we can just paste this in here, that number, and I've already got it set in there like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. 
and you can see we've got a cube now. I'll just hit W to put it on the move tool. And um, I can actually change the pivot of this thing. So this is where things are moving. And I'm going to snap the bottom of this to the grid. Let me show you how I'm going to move that real quick. I'm going to hit insert, and that allows us to move that pivot point around. If we um, just hold down V, which turns on uh, vert snapping, we can click this green axis here, just grab it and push it down until we get close to these points down here, and it'll automatically snap to the bottom of that. And then when we're done snapping that pivot point, just tap insert again. So just tap insert, and that lets you cycle between those. Now to snap to grid, I'm going to hold down X, and that's going to turn on temporarily this snap to grid option. I'm going to hold that down and click on just this as axis alone, and click and drag up like that and I should be snapped to the grid right there like that so um, I'm gonna just push this thing over just a little bit just so we can see what's going on so here's the six foot mark again if you want to uh, save this thing off where you know that it's uh, six f uh, feet by six feet like that you can save this thing off and have that um, I'll just put this oops I'll put this back in the center like that and I'll just hide it so I'm going to select it and hit control H and that'll hide that object if you want to bring it back hit shift H uh, to bring it back so this is a nice little scene for us that we can save off and we can just say file save as go to the option box find some place to save it I would recommend that you get a folder structure for yourself where you want to start saving these things off I'm just gonna put on the desktop uh, just for now just for speed's sake and I'll call this uh, UE4 scale ref for reference hit save as and that'll save that off and now you're done now you've got some kind of reference for yourself for scale and you know that that works between both Unreal Engine 4 and Maya. So anytime you make something new, you can just import your stuff into this scene or import this scale reference scene into the scene that you're working with. And you can know if you make a uh, character, creature, uh, weapons, props, vehicles, whatever, you can get the scale of this character and start to get some kind of relationship between uh, the object that you're creating and know something about the scale of that before you push it into the game engine. So I've showed you specifically with Unreal Engine 4, but the same workflow kind of process should work for any kind of game engine that you go through. I would highly, highly recommend that you definitely take the time to go through this process and these steps, no matter what project it is that you're starting on, because again, scale can be this thing that just plagues a project for the entire duration of a project and cause confusion against you, your team members, and everybody else. So if everybody's kind of on the same page and somebody set up this little tiny scene like this, you can share this amongst your team and it'll save everybody a lot of headache and a lot of trouble. Uh, so definitely make sure you pay attention to this process and get it set up.